Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I am super excited for today because we're finally gonna make something that I have been wanting to do for a long time but it is very advanced which is why I kind of pushed it back to um, you know make some room for more easy projects and something that you know a bigger crowd would be able to make but it is finally time because I just simply want to and I finally found the motivation to do so to make a Chanel inspired costume. I actually know if that's the word in English, but basically a blazer jacket and a mini skirt and this amazing green boucle, which I am super excited to show you and to work with, of course. And yeah, so I already started. I am actually working off of my coat block with darts, the plus 7.5 centimeters coat block um, that I have included in my coat guide. But you can just simply make that by following this video up here and just putting the fullness of 7.5 into the block. It's just a bigger dress block basically if it comes down to that. So you can just simply make that yourself or you can of course get my ultimate uh, guide for jackets and coats where this pattern is included. So I am working off of that and I just did some calculations because I um, measured the waist from this coat block and it's 97 centimeters, which is a normal waist for size S for a coat block with an addition of 7.5. But I have, you know, a, a few special things that I want to have for this blazer. First of all, I want to have strong shoulders. I bought some shoulder pads, which I want to include because that's just a silhouette that is modern at the moment. So I want to have strong shoulders, a narrow waist, and then the blazer should be about mid hip length. So that's what I want to do, which is why I figured the coat block with 7.5 centimeters plus darts is a good start because it has bigger shoulders, of course, and the darts that I can start working with. And I figured, since it is an outer garment, my waist is 64, so I figured a waist of 75 for the jacket would be a good starting point. So I did the calculations, which is basically 97 minus 75, that equals 22 centimeters, for the whole circumference of your blazer. So since we're working in halves, you divide that by two equals 11. Now you have two side seams front and back. So you divide it by two again, which means you have to take out 5.5 centimeters on each the front and the back piece. You can either put that in the darts in the side seam and both whatever is suitable for that thing that you're doing. So. We're gonna do that and of course I'm gonna take you with me how I am developing the pattern, the jacket in general. So yeah, it's gonna be a long video, it's gonna be um, a technical video and of course it's gonna be something with a cool outcome. So let's get going. Okay, so now that I have copied out my coat block, I'm actually going to do 5.5 centimeters on both the front and back. And I'm gonna divide this 5.5 to two centimeters in the side seam and then the remaining 2.5 in equal parts onto the dart in the waist. And then here on the back piece, I'm actually going to narrow down the back by two centimeters in the waistline and just angle it down and then do a parallel line from the waistline down to the hip. That is just the usual way on how you would actually construct the center back for a more fitted pattern, I guess. So there is two centimeters already here, which means let's do less in the dart. So let's do one centimeter on each each side of the dart, so two and then one into the side seam of the front, which means three centimeters in the front. Therefore, 2.5 are still remaining, which need to be put into the back. I'm gonna do two centimeters here in the side seam. That means I have four, which is gonna be a huge dart. So I think I'm just gonna make it two darts. So I'm gonna do this with one centimeter 
And then here in the middle of this line, I'm gonna make another dart, which I'm gonna make two centimeters in total. So that means I have one, two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, which is 5.5 plus 5.5. Okay, that means that is enough that I took out. This probably looks very complicated, but I basically just took 11 centimeters out of the pattern by just making the waistline smaller by putting it into different locations and I divided the dart in the back into two darts because this would be way too big of a dart if I made it bigger with, by four centimeters. It's, it's way too much. This would basically make the fabric like be very, very tight and curved here and not anywhere else, which is why I want to separate this dart into two darts so that there are more positions of narrowing down of the waist. It just looks better in the end. I think I'm gonna make this one a tiny bit taller still because it looks a bit weird and also make it go all the way down to the hip line because in the front you don't have that many curves in the front for your hip which is why it's okay to make your dart go all the way down whereas here you have the booty obviously so you need the space. This looks now very complicated but I'm gonna cut it out and then you're gonna see what the pattern in the end actually looks like. Another thing that I wanted to do is here in the shoulder there is the dart but I have shoulder pads which means that technically we can just take out the start because my shoulder pads pretty thick to be honest like they're probably 1.5 centimeters anyways this looks about to be 1.5 to 2 centimeters it's 1.5 so we would have to go up 1.5 centimeters anyways for the shoulder pads as we have to make room for them so we can basically just take out the the shoulder dart completely and also go up 1.5 centimeters in the front to accommodate the shoulder pad then we would have to make this line go all the way to the neck and not just next to the dart just like this and we also have to figure out first of all do we want the start to be in here or in here because i think in the side seam would be better but then also we could just make this like a dividing line and I think that would also look really good. Let's just leave it in there for now. But we also have to check that the new shoulder line still fits the back shoulder line and it is normal for the shoulder in the back to be one centimeter bigger than the shoulder in the front. But as you can see here, the shoulder in the back is more than one centimeter bigger. So we actually need to narrow the shoulder down by a tiny bit and they fit better together. And yeah, apart from that, we're not gonna do anything else yet because I wanna test the fit to begin with. So let's cut this out and see how it looks on a body. Okay, so I finished the mock-up right here and I put it on my dress form. So just so that you know, in here is an actual arm from my dress form that I made. In here, there's none. So this one is to be ignored this side. This one is more how it will fall on the human body. Obviously, I will put this on afterwards on myself and actually do everything that I am showing you right now on myself with somebody wearing this in actuality. So uh, don't be confused. I'm never fitting stuff only on the dress form. I'm completely fitting it on myself off camera, if not on camera. But for this here, I wanted to do this on the dress form because I can show you more stuff. So the first thing that you always want to do if you are working with shoulder pads, you always want to put shoulder pads into your mock-up and fit it with the original ones that you will put in the final garment as well. So in my case, I put them in here. I just pinned them to the shoulder area where they're supposed to sit. Now you can see right here that the pads actually don't stop like right at the seam, but they go a tiny bit further into the sleeves. That's where they should sit around five millimeters more towards the sleeves. That just makes a nicer shoulder rounding, I guess. But there will also be another strip that goes in the onto the inside of the sleeve that I'll address once we're working on it. But that's basically how these are placed. I have not put any label color in the blazer yet. I have not done any overlap. This is just how the pattern goes together as is. So 
In general, I think the shape from this pattern works really, really well. Like, I did not think that it would work that well because it's more or less already the shape that I wanted to have. I wanted to have this really, really broad shoulder situation, tiny waist, and then shaped to the body itself. So like a good shape around the hip area and not too much width in this area, more width up here and like in the bust area and stuff. Now, the only thing that I want to change is the length of the blazer now because my plan is to put a mini skirt under it to have like this costume look that um, I was thinking about. So I wanna have like a long blazer that goes all the way to almost the hem of the skirt to cover it up almost. Like there should be a tiny, tiny bit, maybe three centimeters of the skirt showing underneath this blazer once you wear it together. So that is basically the plan. And then also I think I want to change the dart situation right here. I think it's pretty boring and I think that it goes more towards the inside than what I would like. Normally I'd say it's nice to have the seam right here either straight or more towards the shoulders. That's just my preference. I think just that looks just better. So that's what I will be doing here as well. I think also that this would not like be a good spacing for the dart. I think a line like that would work generally better. I don't want to put it into the sleeves. I think this more masculine seam lineage, I would say, looks better on this pattern. I think having the label start here is a bit too high. And then I'm thinking if a double-breasted collar would work better in this pattern, which would mean that this would continue down here and then maybe be like this. I'll just put like some paper in here and see how it looks. I put a little bit of length onto this blazer and I think now the length looks much better and you can much better like see what my intentions are basically. So if I stand like this, you can see what I mean. I like how this lays, um, the collar, the label, I think looks good in the whole context. Yeah, I think that's the length that I want to do. Therefore, I have a very masculine blazer which is very fitted around the waist. Pretty good result. And we're gonna start making, or I'm gonna start making the pattern for it. And I'm gonna see you once I'm done with that. So after a lot of preparation, this took me about four hours to actually prepare, which means I ironed my interfacing on I cut everything out. I had to overlock the edges because boucle is a very big weave, which is why this is fraying very easily. And you really don't want this to fray because it's just gonna make, first of all, your life harder. And second of all, you know, your pattern pieces just get smaller and smaller <laughs> by the amount of fraying. So just overlock it and then you should be fine. At least it helped for me. So that's really, really nice. We're gonna start with our front and back pieces. So in my case, I have a dividing seam in my front. You'll just need to put right sides together of front and side front. I am working with a new material that I haven't shown on my channel yet, actually. It's called canvas in English, if I'm not wrong. I would rather translate it into horse hair, though, as that's what it is and, historically speaking, used to be. I am using a synthetic version of this. This helps stabilize the front. It's mainly used in menswear, but for the blazer I am making, I wanted to get the extra portion of prep work to have the best outcome possible. I am basting the canvas onto the front piece in this zigzag kind of way, making sure the stitches are small and they don't show on the right side of the fabric. 
Important for this is to have the canvas stop right at the fold line of the lapel, as otherwise it will prevent the lapel from falling correctly. This graphic also shows how to stitch the canvas. Once done with the hand sewing part, we're going to continue with the back piece. So of course there are some darts in that we have to close and then of course also the center back. The center back has a slit, so we're going to go very much in detail on how to do that in this video. The darts get ironed towards the center back, which I like to do before the center back seam is closed as it's just easier with having less fabric around. I like to use my tailor's hem, which I made myself. Actually, if you're interested, you can click in the eye right now and I'm gonna show you how to make that. The next step is actually closing the center back already. As there is a slit in the center back, I'm going to stitch down towards the 45 degree angle edge and then also stitch along that. So I'm gonna close that small corner and then just leave the approximately 20 centimeter long slit open. I realized that later on and didn't do it right now, but for you, you can go ahead and close the small 45 degree edge as well. Also just for orientation, it really helped me to iron the fold of the slit. If that is something that you like to do as well, go ahead and do so. For me, it just helps orientation wise, I guess. I then iron the seam open and cut into the corner at the slit to be able to iron correctly because the slit obviously is going to lay towards one side. In my case, it lays towards the left side. Make sure to have that in mind because this is going to help you continue with the lining and stuff. You're like You need to know towards side your um, piece lays. And to continue working on other parts of the blazer for now, I pin the slit close. Because that's actually all the prep work for the slit that we can do for now, we can continue with the shoulder seams. It's just the usual way we're going to sew the shoulder seams together. I then also top stitch the seam allowance towards the back seam, so that's also really important. Now we can prepare the pockets. Since the pockets are inseam pockets, those are pretty easy to make. You're going to find some notches in the pattern for the pockets. Put right sides of your pocket and your front piece together and pin it into place. The back actually needs a facing which is going to get stitched onto your pocket first. So you want to align the facing piece with your back pockets and then just simply stitch into your overlock seam or if you didn't overlock because you didn't have to, you can just simply stitch very closely to the edge of your pocket facing and prepare the back pocket in that way. Those then also get you know, put onto the back piece right sides together and get stitched on after you're done with the facing. Go ahead and give it a good press. Since the materials vary greatly in thickness, the thinner fabric usually shows some sort of wrinkles which can easily be ironed out of the pieces. So now that the facing is on, we can go ahead and actually put right sides together onto the back piece as well. And you can go ahead and fix these into place just there. So now that that is done, I actually would like to backstitch the seam right here just because it's making everything easier. I know this is a lot of back and forth, starting a lot of projects within the project, but this is just the best way of sewing this blazer, so bear with me. Grab your sleeve pieces, upper and lower sleeve that is, and put right sides together to close the dividing seam. This time around, actually sew all the way down. So sew the slit corners and then also the remaining slit shut. So 
So I already went ahead and prepared just for me to think through how this works basically and also for you to be able to see how this works. So I have a slit right here. This is actually a false one. I will do a real one in the back of the piece. So in the center back, there's going to be a real lined open slit, but in the sleeves, I don't think it's necessary. So a false one works similar to the real one, except for you close it in the outer shell and you have a normal lining. So on the back I went ahead and stitched this corner for the slit. I stitched it shut. You have like one whole piece that just has this 3D uh, corner basically in here and this is how it's gonna end up laying. So of course there is the sleeve hem facing on this piece already included which means that we have to um, iron the facing upwards and that's what I prepared just for you to be able to see this. Now then this is gonna be folded just like this and on the right side of the fabric it looks like a sleeve. We're gonna put buttons and buttonholes and also top stitch everything down because we want to top stitch this anyways to one side to this side which is the um, Front. and then we're gonna go down here and follow this cut of the slit itself to fix it into place. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna top stitch all the way down here and fix the sleeve into place and then measure everything correctly and stitch it. Also give the slit a good press and close it with pins for now. Put the sleeve into the armhole by aligning the shoulder seam and all notches. The dividing seam in the sleeve needs to sit in the back armhole. Now it's time for another new pattern piece, the sleeve head wadding. This is gonna help shape the sleeve in combination with the shoulder pads and give the sleeve head a bit more strength and therefore a better look. It fits right onto the sleeve cap from front to back sleeve notch. The material I used for this is by the way a three millimeter thick felt. When sewing the sleeve head wadding into place, only stitch into the seam allowance. I like to sew at five millimeters. When turning right sides out, you can see that the felt already did its job by giving the sleeve cap a nice rounding. This isn't all though, as we're gonna put some really thick shoulder pads into the seam as well. Mine is 1.5 centimeters thick. When pinning shoulder pads into place, it's important to work with the shoulder being bent into the correct direction, meaning I'm always working from the right side. There should be shoulder notches in the pad itself to make it easier to align them with your shoulder seam of your project. I make sure that the pad reaches about one centimeter into the sleeve itself as that shapes it additionally. Once it looks good from the right side, I go ahead and also sew the pads into place. Usually you would hand sew these into place, but I really am not a big fan of that and I found this works perfectly well with the machine like this as well. So I feel comfortable enough to recommend this way to you. Like with the sleeve head wadding, I only stitch into the seam allowance at around 5mm. All of the seam allowances in the shoulder get ironed into the sleeve for even more structure and strength. Once the shoulders look nice and rounded, it's time to close the side seams. As per usual, I pin the sleeves together, go over the shoulder seam down to the pockets, around the pockets and down to the hem of the blazer. You should be able to do all of this in one go. When pinning the pockets together, it's important to put the stitching line of both pockets right on top. As there are notches in the seam allowances, it's pretty easy to match up though.
I press the seam allowance in the sleeves open, cut into the seam allowance at the shoulder seam and iron the seam allowance towards the back in the side seam. As the pockets face towards the front, I also cut into the seam allowance right above and below the pocket. And now we're already at the collar and the jacket is coming together really, really well. The inner collar, the one with the seam in the center back and the diagonal grain line on the paper pattern, gets sewn onto the collar cutout of the outer layer that we've been working on. Just align all notches and sew along. The next part is the facing and lining. Since this is pretty much the same to what I explained in my last video, I'm going to skip forward to the slit in the center back because that's something very specific and new. To see how facings and lining get sewn into place though, make sure to click on the eye right now and watch my last video on that. In the video description of that video, you're going to find timestamps for exactly those topics. Specific to this pattern, or patterns with shoulder pads in general, is fixing the rounded side, the one facing towards the neck, into place. This is done with a big X-shaped stitch that's going to ensure the pad stays in place, but also leaves a bit of room to move around while wearing the garment. Another spot that I like to address is the lining in the sleeve hems. Those get sewn onto the hem facing just like normally, but as there is this false slit, you can sew all the way around, which is totally fine as we can sew the whole shut by hand and that's exactly what we're gonna do. From the right side it looks exactly the same as a usual sleeve, you can't really tell the difference. The false slit is just for decoration which is gonna get a row of four buttons sewn onto it on each sleeve in the end. Let's continue with the slit in the center back. After following my link tutorial on how to sew lining, you should end up with exactly the same as you can see on screen. Of course, there is the slit also in the lining pattern, which is to be sewn shut until the end of the 45 degree angle to continue working. The lining has two different back pattern pieces. One looks like the outer layer at the slit area. The other one has a cutout for the slit. These differences determine the direction the slit is pointing at. In this video, the slit opens on the right side of the jacket. Align the lining and outer layer from the end of the 45 degree seam and work your way down. You can draw on your stitching line if needed. Now turn your lining so the right side of the slit meets the right side of the slit of the outer layer to be able to pin both layers together. As the 45 degree angle is already stitched shut, it's important to start stitching right at the end of that seam. I like to pin that point to also match it up with the equivalent of the outer layer. Now you can work your way down to 8 cm plus seam allowance, so in my case 9 cm, higher than the end of the outer layer and 4 cm plus seam allowance, so in my case 5 cm higher than the end of the lining. That's the point until you need to stitch both pieces right sides together. Why those numbers? 8 cm plus seam allowance is just the stitching line of when the hem facing is turned up. So 4 cm hem facing get turned up and reach another 4 cm higher, so 8 cm in total plus seam allowance. 4 cm plus seam allowance in the lining because you have a 2 times 2 cm overhang to be able to move without the lining pulling on the hem. So these numbers generally are important to understand. After a good iron, you can already see how this all is going to fit together. The right side of the slit gets sewn together exactly the same way until the same point as the left side of the slit. So 8 cm plus seam allowance of the outer layer and 4 cm plus seam allowance on the lining. So here you can actually see me measure what I had just explained to you on the piece itself again. So it's, I guess, a bit better for you to understand. So five centimeters, which just means four centimeters hem facing plus my seam allowance, plus another four centimeters of the hem facing that got turned up. And then on the lining, also the four centimeters. But those are, you know, if you just pin down your lining onto your outer layer, it just is four centimeters plus seam allowance. Last thing is to add a 45 degree top stitch right on top of, you guessed it, 
the 45 degree seam. I like to fix both layers, lining and outer layer with pins together and then draw on my stitching line on the right side of my piece. I also drew on for later the stitching line of the vertical top stitches to just have some sort of idea of how it's gonna look in the end to be able to draw the perfect length of the 45 degree top stitching line. The slit is done after some ironing and the next small project within this project is the hem itself. For the hem, I'm gonna show you another new method to finish corners that I haven't shown on my channel yet. So this video is basically full of new advanced manufacturing methods that I'm super excited to share with you. Leave me down in the comments if you like tips and tricks like that and if you'd like to see me use new methods in upcoming videos. The left hem facing gets sewn just like the front and front facing corner, you've seen it plenty of times, so just fold the hem facing up so right sides meet and stitch down that short edge. The right side gets something called a mitered corner. To make this corner, you need to draw a diagonal line from the end of the stitches of your slit to where the slit itself reaches once folded. But don't cut this away quite yet, as we need to add seam allowance. Now the outer line is our cutting line and the inner our stitching line, so let's cut this corner away. Once you fold right sides together, you can go ahead and sew the corner. Make sure to have the lining facing up, as you can clearly see where to start stitching on that side. Now cut into the seam allowance at the fold of the mitered corner and pop it right out. While I'm at it, I can also go ahead and measure my hem facing and where to fold it again four centimeters plus seam allowance. I can then iron that in place already to prepare for sewing the lining in just a second. The left side of the slit also gets just turned right sides out and ironed just like the other side. Sewing the lining is just like I showed you in the previously linked video with the difference of having a division in the middle, aka the slit. But this just means that I have four corners instead of two, but they basically just get the same treatment. Reach into the inside through the opening in your sleeve and grab the hem of both lining and outer layer. Pin the pieces together starting from the middle with your chosen seam allowance, in my case one centimeter, and work your way towards both corners in a diagonal way to reach the stitching points on both sides that are already in your piece. And lastly, I add the hem top stitches at 3.5 centimeters. They connect on the left side of the slit with the 45 degree seam that is already in, go down to the hem and turn the corner towards the front parallel to the hem. On the right side, it's just a horizontal hem top stitch at 3.5 centimeters. And that's it already for today's video. Already, <laughs> it's been 35 minutes almost. I hope you enjoyed. I know this blazer is super advanced and not for everybody, but I get so many comments all the time on how they just like to watch how I make stuff in a more professional way. Therefore, I thought it's time to just drop this video and to make this project because I am super, super in love with the outcome. I actually added a belt which is in the pattern as well, if you're interested in it. I didn't show it on camera, but because it's literally just, you know, putting right sides together, stitching and done, and eyelets, <laughs> that's it. But um, just to, you know, say something about that. I really had a lot of fun. I thought that I had to split it up again, but I'm super proud and happy that I am able to fit this into one video, one super detailed and super, um, a long video nevertheless but yeah that was just a project i really really wanted to show you guys so if you haven't already go hit the subscribe button down below ring the bell to get notified anytime that i post i post on sundays if you haven't noticed but meanwhile you can go ahead and check all the other videos i have on my channel i have loads of videos all about fashion sewing and of course pattern construction and if that's not enough 
go and follow me on my Instagram. I am actually having a super special video coming up for next week, which is gonna be a more vlog style video of us making some social media content. So Dennis is gonna be part of the video again, and of course me, but since it is about social media, we are gonna post a lot of that on my Instagram as well. So go ahead and follow me there. Link is in the description, of course. I would be super, super happy if you could just interact with this video in any way, give this a like, put a comment down below anything, show this to your friends, your family, share it, whatever. You would help me out tremendously because you guys know interactions push videos to the top. So if you could just give me a little bit more exposure that would be amazing. A lot of time is spent on making these kinds of videos so if you want to support me you can either do that with interaction as I just said or you can check out my Etsy store. Link is down in the description below. Of course this pattern is available on my Etsy store as well and you have some discounts at the moment because it's cyber week so you can go and check out my store. Everything's reduced 50% at the moment until only next Sunday so definitely check that out if you haven't already. And I say thanks so much for watching again and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys! Oh. <laughs>